Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. I figured this was one of those projects I would take upon once I felt I had the right skills to properly handle it. I feel like it's that time now. This week, I'll be making a Planet of the Apes stronghold, once straight out of the movie, but with a D&D slash Frankie D Crafter twist. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content, and don't forget to like and share. Now, let's do this. I want to start off by saying that I don't plan to spend a lot of time on the base for the build. I have a video that pretty much covers these steps. I will point out differences and things that need to be done differently, like the cave entrance here, and a few supports. One of the supports here, acting like a backdrop for the cave entrance. Let's start with some PVC pipe, and I want it to be glued to the bottom layer of the cardboard, so we are gonna have to cut a hole for it. I miscalculate here with my backdrop, but it doesn't matter. Once I add the hot glue, I just move that to the side. You don't need the PVC pipe if you don't have access to it. Wire and aluminum work great as well. I'll be using these for branches and roots. Please note that you don't need wire for all these. You will mainly need it for the ones that are holding weight. We're off to a good start here for the base, but like I mentioned before, I made some clips on recent episodes that you should definitely check out for more tips. I'm trying to get this tree to look like it's really holding on to the cliff. I try to exaggerate the roots as much as possible. I start to scratch at these skewers to make them look a bit less perfect. I do this to a lot of them, since the tree from the movie makes it look like they're fending off against giants. Now that sounds like a good encounter. I'll make sure to save my scraps. I feel like I'll be able to use them later in the project. I carefully make holes in the PVC pipe. This would be a lot easier if I used aluminum and wire. I cut the skewers to the appropriate size and hot glue them in. I remove these to be able to add the ground mix. And the ground mix is nothing but caulk, the cheapest I could find, and some sand. Boom, call it a day. Also, take the opportunity to cover the sides of the cardboard here. I also like to use Sculptamol to get rid of any unnatural gaps between the sanitized tree bark. In the previous video, I used clay to make the wood barrel craft. This week, I'll be doing the same thing, but this time, on the tree. I get the clay nice and thin to get a good coverage on the pipe. To help me out, I also add PVA glue to it. I add my clay and start texturing, just like I did on the last video. I add more spikes as well. There is a secondary purpose for the spikes, that I will mention later on the video. But for now, let's continue to add more texture to the tree.
talking about texture, I really enjoyed the look I was getting from just pushing this tool into the tree. I decided to make this my texture. There's something about it I really liked. We'll see how it looks painted. More spikes, because everyone knows that the pointer and more dangerous the craft, the cooler the players will think it is. But jokes aside, make sure you keep in mind your players will be moving their hands around this craft. I try to cut the tips of the spikes to make them less dangerous. I also make sure not to put spikes where I think there will be a lot of hand traffic. So I avoid spikes on the hillside unless they are low. I avoid spikes on the cave entrance. And I also avoid spikes that will get in the way of the platforms. These spikes will also act like platforms. Let's get back on track though. I add more roots and branches. The spike made this a bit more challenging, which was good because I felt a little bit more alive. All these branches are handled the same way as before. Glue, clay, and stuff. I'm starting to run out of materials in this quarantine, so I go out for some small rocks to add to the craft. E6000 is a powerhouse of a glue, and that's why I choose it here instead of hot glue. I'm getting ready to move on from the base. All I need here is more sculpt mold and a bit more tiny rocks. I've had this foam ball since I started the channel. Might as well use them here. When cutting these, make sure to take your time. It's just an awkward cut. Just be safe. I carve out the area where these will connect to the trunk. I'll pause here and get back to the flocking and attaching them once I'm done with the painting. It's already a difficult task with the spikes and all, so I don't want to complicate things farther. Like always, I use black Mod Podge mix mainly because I want to seal the sculptor mold. Then I dry brush the crap out of it. Brown for the ground and all that good stuff. This would be a great time to hit that like button if you're enjoying what I'm making. For the walls I went with a beige and cement grey. I am a huge fan of how the walls look at this stage. I wish I would have chosen a lighter wash now that I'm looking at the stones again. I brush all my stones. And start to add my washes. You know, browns to browns and blacks to anything you want darker, I guess. After all of that, I continue to add flock, which is just sawdust and cheap green paint. Back to the treetop. Let's connect one more branch to add some height to the build. I 
At first, I plan to make the treetops using the same techniques I have used in previous videos. I think this technique works best on smaller trees, not so much on this massive fort. I decided to use another material that I had stored away since I started the channel, Spanish moss. If you plan to flock this way, I would suggest you paint the foam before you add the moss. I would go with black or a really dark green. I layer the moss enough to hide the foam beneath. I paint the bottom black and then I add watered down glue to harden the moss more. This makes it hard enough for me to put my minis on it. I use hot glue to bring it all together and you know what? I think I'm done. No! I guess there's some more finishing touches that have to be done. If you are willing, you can always add more spikes. And as for these leftovers from before, I guess we can use them as tall grass. I simply add hot glue and stick the leftovers. Then I cover the hot glue with PVA glue as grass flocking. And we are done. No! Okay, okay, I'm running out of material here. What else can I use here? Sorry tree I made a long time ago. I have a better tree now. And it requires a sacrifice. There. I think I'm actually done here. Awesome. This was extremely fun to make and I can't wait to use it in game. I have plans to make an interesting dungeon from this where it actually becomes three different levels. Keep an eye on upcoming videos. I made it special for some minis I've already crafted. I'm planning on using my Bagoras as massive ape demons which is pretty much what they already are. Check out the video for those here. I even painted them some underlings using some cheap miniatures that I had laying around. I actually ended up retouching them since I feel like my painting skills have come a long way since I started the channel. And like always, thank the Patreons. You guys are the best. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.